road has brought us here to America's Georgia and Oak Grove Cemetery. We're here to visit Joanna Moore. Now just the name Joanna Moore probably doesn't ring any bells. But if you watch the Andy Griffith show, I guarantee you that you know who Joanna Moore is. Joanna played the part of Peggy McMillan in season three of the Andy Griffith show. She was the blonde haired girlfriend of Andy Taylor. Believe it or not, she was only in four episodes. You would think that uh, she was in more because you can mention that to just about anyone and they know exactly who you're talking about and they would just about swear that she was in more than just the four episodes. Joanna did a lot in Hollywood though, not just the Andy Griffith show. As a matter of fact, she was in hundreds of TV shows and in movies. If you were a child of the 60s, I guarantee you, you saw her in other episodes, maybe of Perry Mason, maybe Gunsmoke. She was even under contract with Alfred Hitchcock, so she was in a couple of episodes with Alfred Hitchcock Presents. Tragically, at six years old, her mother, her baby sister, and her father were involved in a single car accident, which took the life of her sister and her mother. A year later, her father passed away from injuries that he sustained in that accident. Shortly after that, Dorothy was adopted by a fairly wealthy family and they changed her name to Joanna. In 1951, Joanna married her first husband, Willis Moore. She ended up keeping that last name for her acting career. That marriage didn't last very long. It only lasted maybe a year. And then shortly thereafter, she went to college at Agnes Scott College in Atlanta. While in college, she entered a beauty contest and won, and that's where she was discovered and was carried off to Hollywood. She made her television debut in the November 8th, 1956 episode of the Lux Video Theater. Later on, she did an appointment with a shadow. In 1958, she was in Touch of Evil with Orson Welles, Charlton Heston, and Janet Lee, although it was a small part. She got bigger parts in the film Monster on Campus and the Western Ride a Crooked Trail. After she began her acting career, another tragedy struck her. She lost her hearing. But after a few years, she was able to have surgery and corrected that problem. In the meantime, though, when she was filming, she learned to read lips. If the actor she was working with was turned away or she couldn't read his lips, someone off camera would cue her, either by emotion or maybe even prodding her to let her know when it was time for her to read her lines. Her career really began to take off in the early 1960s. That was in 1962 when she joined the Andy Griffith Show cast. She was only there for four episodes, but it really does seem like there was a lot more. She joined the cast in season three, episode two. It was never really explained what happened to Peggy on the Andy Griffith show. Did she leave? Did they break up? Nobody really knows, but if you look on YouTube, and I will put a link in the description below, there's a coffee commercial where Andy and Aunt B are in the kitchen and the phone rings and it's Peggy. Now you never hear her voice and you never see her, but Andy kind of, I don't know, kind of shoos her away, fluffs, fluffs her off, tells Aunt B to tell her something because he wants to finish his coffee. That could be why she left. So you may remember Joanna from other TV shows too, other than just Andy Griffith's show. She was in Gunsmoke, she was in Alfred Hitchcock, as we mentioned earlier, but she was also in TV shows like Bewitched. You might remember her as being a school chum of Darren, who actually was a beauty contest winner. And of course, that makes everybody jealous because Darren's paying her too much attention. What I remember her from is from the Elvis movie, Follow That Dream, where she played Alicia Claypool. Now she was a psychologist and her and her partner were trying to get Elvis and his family to move off the beach where they were homesteading. She had an interest in Elvis and then when he shunned her, she turned against the family and brought them to court to have them thrown off the beach. Of course, if you've not seen the movie, I'm not gonna spoil it for you. Something else you might not know about Joanna is that she was married four times and her third marriage was to Ryan O'Neill in 1962. From that marriage, she had two children, the only two children she had, Gavin and Tatum O'Neill. That's right. 
Tatum O'Neill is Joanna's daughter. Ryan and Joanna stayed married for four years. That was the longest of her four marriages. It was during that time that Joanna became addicted to alcohol. Sadly, that took a toll on her life and her family. Even though her and Ryan had been divorced in 1970, Ryan got full custody of both children. Her career began to fade after that point. She did go into rehab a couple of times, but sadly it was hard for her to kick the substance abuse issues. She continued acting even into the 70s and 80s. She ended up doing a film with Yvonne Craig, you know, Bad Girl, and Cynthia Pepper. It was called Three Coins in a Fountain. In 1974, she appeared in Walton's episode titled The Departure. Her last feature film was The Hindenburg. After 1976, she only had two parts. One was in the 1980 television film Scout's Honor starring Gary Coleman, and the other was a small part in an Australian film called Run Chrissy Run. Despite those two projects, people had thought that maybe she had isolated herself. They hadn't seen her in years. But they did find her in Palm Springs, where she was doing small theater projects. Something that some people may or may not know is that Joanna had a beautiful voice. If you watch one of the Andy Griffith episodes where she and Andy are sitting on the front porch, she sings Down in the Valley. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to see that video. Other than singing on the Andy Griffith episode, she recorded one single. And it was an answer song. Now, if you don't know what an answer song is, that's a song that responds to another song. And it was a really big thing back in the 60s. For example, Tell Laura I Love Her. The answer song was Tell Tommy I Miss Him by Marilyn Michaels. If you heard the song Save the Last Dance for Me, then the answer song to that is I'll Save the Last Dance for You. So the answer song that Joanna recorded was an answer song to the 1967 hit by Glenn Campbell, written by Jimmy Webb, By the Time I Get to Phoenix. Her answer song, also written by Jimmy Webb, was entitled By the Time You Get to Phoenix. Again, I'll leave a link down in the description. By the end of the 1980s and 1990s, her career had pretty much vanished. Her daughter, Tatum O'Neill, was doing all she could to support her. And it's uncanny, I'll put a picture here of Tatum beside her mother, Joanna, it's uncanny how much they look alike. Joanna continued to struggle with alcoholism. She was arrested at least five times for driving under the influence. Also, as a result of an automobile accident, she lost three fingers on her left hand. That inspired her to write a book, though, short story, where she referred to one of her grandchildren as looking at Nana's tiny hand. And it, may, it may be because of her addictive personality, but she also struggled with cigarettes. She was a chain smoker. Chain smoking led to her having throat cancer. And that is what ended up taking her life. Joanna passed away November 22nd, 1997, and she was laid to rest at Hillside Memorial Park in Culver City, California. At some point, her family decided to bring her body back here to the little town that she was born in, Americus, Georgia. And she was laid to rest beside her father, Henry A. Cook III, who died a year after the uh, auto accident on August the 11th, 1942, and also beside her mother and her sister. Dorothy E. Cook, her mother, died on March 31st, 1941, along with her baby sister, Virginia Louisa Cook, who was less than a year old. And they were buried together here in this plot. Joanna's grandson, Kevin McEnroe, has her picture tattooed on his shoulder. He also wrote a book called Our Town, where the main character is dedicated and modeled after his grandmother, Dorothy. So Joanna Moore, Dorothy Joanne Cook, thank you for the joy you've given us. Your story started in this small town, your best known, for playing a part in the small town of Mayberry. And now, hopefully you're at peace, resting back in this small town next to your mother, your father, and your baby sister. Thanks, Joanna, for all the memories you've given us. Thank you for the joy you've spread, and thank you for the work that you've done that will keep not only this generation, but generations to come 
happy and motivated. If you enjoyed today's video, give us a like, hit that subscribe button, it's absolutely free, and leave a comment down below. And until next time, the road is closed.